Let me begin with Dr. Anand Ranganathan. Dr. Ranganathan, look, I agree with you. The Prime Minister could have or agree with the Congress. I never thought I would say that, but why not? Let's be honest. The words the Prime Minister used could have been smoothened out a little bit. The rough edges didn't have to be so politically incorrect, so to speak. But at the heart of it, do you think he's making some sense or is he just spreading communal poison? Good evening, Raul, and good evening to my fellow panelists. First of all, let me congratulate you for that wonderful primer, so informative. There are three issues that emerge when we deconstruct or analyze the speech of PM Modi. Let me elaborate on each of them very briefly. Number one, did Prime Minister Manmohan Singh actually say what Modi claimed he said, that Muslims uh, have the first right to resources? Now, here is what Manmohan Singh said in his speech in 2006, quote, we will have to devise innovative plans to ensure that minorities, particularly the Muslim minority, are empowered to share equitably in the fruits of development. They must have the first claim on resources, unquote. Now, three points on this. A, they could be interpreted as meaning all minorities or because Muslims were mentioned specifically, only Muslims. In any case, grammatically, it is ambiguous. B, why should minorities, including Muslims, have the first right to resources? It should be the poor, whether be from minority or majority. And C, Prime Minister Manmohan Singh remained the Prime Minister eight years after he made this contentious speech. Is there, I ask you, any video clip of his refuting the claim that he said Muslims must have the first right to resources? Any video from hundreds of press conferences he gave from 2006 to 2014? No. Number two, the most pertinent issue that Modi has brought up through his speech is that of the draconian, and I'm sorry, there's no other white to word to describe it, diabolical, diabolical Congress promise of wealth redistribution, straight out of the pocket diaries of Mahav and Pol Pot. Common sense tells you that beyond the wealth that is anyway redistributed through the income and corporate taxes, any further redistribution amounts to the Marxist idea of looting those who generate wealth. Or as Marx famously said, from each according to his ability to each according to his need. But who decides what is ability and what is need? Altruism must always be a fraction of truism. Congress raised corporate tax to 45% in 1991. Modi reduced it to 22%. Because common sense tells you that zealous redistribution of wealth actually reduces wealth and total redistribution of wealth reduces wealth totally because it removes the incentive from people who generate wealth to generate wealth because it makes a segment of population, the recipients, uncompetitive and unproductive because it destroys every nation that has ever implemented it. The metaphor of gold and Mangal Sutra being stolen by the Congress to be redistributed was a, I have to say, clever and cunning ploy by PM Modi to criticize wealth redistribution without questioning its evil nature through merely mentioning redistribution of corporate wealth instead. So it struck a chord. Look. This anti-science communist cult that birth redistribution of wealth has resulted in the murder of 100 million innocents. It is the antithesis of Darwinism in that it abjures competition and empathy. It attracts hateful, incompetent failures in life. It cushions their guilt of destroying things they are incapable of ever building. One must understand, Rahul, the thin lines that divide communism, anarchy and revolution are there for a purpose. Hopscotch. Rahul and his lapdogs have perfected the art of jumping from one square to another. Communism today, anarchism tomorrow, revolution forever. Finally, just 30 seconds of those who say Modi indulged in hate speech. Well, if quoting a former prime minister, mentioning infiltrators and those with more kids without identifying them directly is hate speech, then what is, I ask you, chanting five times a day, no one has the right to be worshipped but Allah 4062. Polytheists, i.e. Hindus are the worst of creatures 98.6. Those who disbelieve in our verses, we will drive them into a fire. Do not disbelieve as friends unless they convert and kill them if they refuse. Is that hate speech? Is singling out kafirs and ordering their murder hate speech? Answer if you have the guts. Well, I never thought that Dr. Ranganathan would also give full marks to Rahul and the Congress. Marks as in, obviously, viewers the author of the Communist Manifesto, Karl Marx. Now, uh, Tehseen Punawala, can I ask you a simple and straightforward question? Why are we running away from the real issue? That the Congress has borrowed heavily from the Communist Manifesto 
from the failed policies of Soviet Union, Mao's China, Venezuela, Zimbabwe, and of course its own past. Those massive tax rates, almost 90, 95% tax rates, this other horrible scheme that was introduced, which you backpedal and quickly shoved under the mattress, which I've already referred to, as you know, the Compulsory Deposit Scheme Act of 1963, several other schemes. I mean, we are even burdened with the legacy of taxpayers like me giving subsidies after subsidies to rich farmers who are 10 times richer than all of us put together here. Let me tell you, on this panel, and there are some hefty people with big wallets on this panel. Not me, of course. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> well, well you're just waiting Eddie. for the next patent. And once you get that patent, you're done. But uh, look, let me ask you, Tessin, I, you, you know what I mean. Would you like to see your hard-earned money that you get from your businesses, etc., taken away, assessed, just because you're thought to be a criminal? <laughs> Thank you, Rahul. When you described the last line, it almost felt like enforcement directorate that you will get assessed just because you're thought to be a criminal. That's in the ED which Mr. Modi passed, his government passed as a finance bill. But let me come to the substance of the issue and let me take each thing one by one because I cannot talk only on certain points and not bring in the context. So what Anand quoted about Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh, he refuses to quote the full paragraph. So please do not interrupt me. Let your viewers hear the full paragraph. I believe our collective priorities are clear, agriculture, irrigation and water resources, health, education, critical investment in rural infrastructure and the essential public investment needs of the general infrastructure along with programs for the upliftment of SC, STs, other backward castes, minorities, women and children. The component plans for the scheduled castes and scheduled tribes will need to be revitalized and we will have to devise innovative plans to ensure the minorities, particularly the Muslim minorities, are empowered to share equitability in the future development, future of development. They must have the first claim on resources. Now, Anand and, Dr. and Rahul, the word used is claim, not rights. Anand deliberately quoted rights. Very different. Number two, he talks about SC, ST, women, right. OBC, everybody. But you just I pick up claim. Muslims. Please. Now, now, Please. Anand, I cannot debate this way. It doesn't behove you to keep interrupting it. Okay, Kindly allow me you. to finish. I'll get you, in. I, you had your Dr. say. Anand, Nobody you interrupted you. Let him finish. You. So please allow me my say. Let's be courteous to each other. Please. Thank you. Now, Anand then comes and says, oh, there's no video of Dr. Manmohan Singh uh, saying no to it because he gave a press note. He gave a press note on 10th December saying, look, this full speech has to be written in context and it is about OBC, Dalit, SC, ST, everybody. But no, you'll say there is no video. Why should he speak on a video when there is a press note, a written note from the Prime Minister's office on what he meant? But you will choose not to take it. Now let's come to the Congress's past. This is the political party that brought in liberalization. Guess who opposed it? The Bharati Janta Party. This is the party that wanted to increase FDI. Guess who opposed it? The Bharati Janta Party. This is the party that got in nuclear deal. Guess who opposed it? The Bharati Janta Party. This is the party that got in FDI and retail. Guess who opposed it? The Bharati Janta Party. Which is the party that took us on the part of liberalization? The Congress. Guess who opposed it? The BJP. They opposed every single progressive decision. So now let's come to the last part. The redistribution of wealth. Not only what the Prime Minister said was a dog whistle against Muslims, bordering on hate speech, hate speech which is in my case, the Supreme Court has ruled out, by wrong quoting, because the total fertility rate of Muslims is 2.3 and Hindus is 2.1, not only did it border on it and you've alluded it to that Rahul, what the Prime Minister actually done is not quoted factually from the Congress manifesto. Yes, you take some part of redistribution of wealth. The Congress manifesto talks about growing industry, right to apprenticeship, how people will get jobs, how an entire roadmap will be built to create more jobs. But none of that is taken, but said, okay, a fear mongering that if Rahul has two houses or Anand has four houses, their houses will be surveyed, their houses will be taken and distributed to the Muslims. Now, this is a dog whistle that the Prime Minister is doing. It is written nowhere in that manifesto. And what I find extremely objectionable is for the Prime Minister, who is a very senior leader, to say, Wo aake aapka mangal sutra leke baat dege. It does not behove our Prime Minister. It simply does not behove him and his stature. 